welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily. This is my channel where I talk all about all sorts of knitting stuff. I do regular podcast episodes and I do a lot of other fun knitty content, talk about patterns, talk about projects I'm working on. There's all sorts of stuff. Today is another pattern roundup video. I love doing these and I think you love them as well so good all around. I'm going to be as per usual knitting while I record this video. This is my Gaffret. Is it raglan or pullover? I can't remember what the pattern exactly is called. Gaffret something and it's due on August 25th so I am working on it today and trying to get some knitting done on it. I'm very close to being done now so that's good. Anyways uh, that's besides the point. Today's video is going to be a pattern roundup of a whole bunch of one skein knitting patterns. I love these. They're so great. Everyone has single skeins kicking around in their stash that they don't know what to do with and so I feel like these videos are great for that. They're also great for gift knitting. This is the time of year where I start gearing up and throwing the odd gift knit into my knitting repertoire, my knitting, I don't know, the knitting that I'm working on, because then I find I'm not so stressed once Christmas comes around, so highly recommend. Anyways, before we jump on into all these patterns, there are a couple places you can find me on the internet, birchandlilyfiber.com, my Instagram is at birch.and.lily, and everything else that I talk about, all the patterns, all of that will be linked down below. Oh, also I did, I've had a lot of people asking lately, maybe they can't afford yarn um, for my shop or they just, I don't know, wanted some way that they could support me, which I really appreciate. It's totally not necessary, but I've had enough people ask that I did open up a Ko-Fi. So if that's something you're interested in, that is linked down below as well. But like I said, zero pressure. It was just something people asked for and so I delivered. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's jump on into all of these patterns. There's a couple free ones in here today. I have them all sorted as per usual by type basically. It's so like hats. What do I have today? Hats. I have a pair of slippers. There's a couple shawls, a couple more accessory type things that aren't like a hat or socks, and a, sh a top. Not really, not really a top. It's a bralette that I'm really excited about and I would like to knit to be honest. So yeah, let's, let's stop the rambling. I'm talking a lot here at the beginning and you're here for patterns not to hear me talk well I guess kind of to hear me talk <laughs> but let's jump on in my uh tripod just fell and whacked me in the face so if I have a red spot <laughs> that's why I realized I didn't have my notes set up very well and I couldn't read what I was talking about and that's not very convenient so this should be better now let's jump into the first pattern this is the hat section I've got a couple fun adult hats in here a couple fun children's hats and hopefully you'll find something that you're excited to knit the first pattern I've pulled is Fedra by Gudrun Johnson this is a bulky weight hat pattern and because we're talking about single skein patterns, I should say what I've decided for this video is that I'm going to classify a single skein as 100 grams of yarn because I know some of these patterns are knit up using like a 50 gram skein of yarn and I just wanted to have some sort of like middle ground to say what I classify a single skein of yarn as. So 100 grams of yarn. So back to the Fedra by Gudrun Johnson. This is a bulky weight pattern. Its gauge is 16 stitches by 26 rows. You're looking at about 130 to 160 yards of yarn. In meters, that's about 119 to 146 meters. This pattern does come in one size. It's made to fit about the average adult sized head, so about 20 and a half inches. That is 52 centimeters. And I just thought this one was really cool. I haven't seen anything like this in the past little while at least. It's almost 
geometric in a way. That's the best way I could think of to describe it. It's got a lot of stockinette and garter and there's some yarn overs mixed in there to add some interest. I just think the shape is really flattering and different. Not, not just your typical cables or texture. It's kind of a mix of both. I think this one would be really fun to even knit up maybe with two skeins of DK weight yarn and hold them double to do like a marled effect. I think there's a lot of different ways you could take this pattern. I did want to note that on the pattern page it does say that if you're looking to do the included pom-pom, the yardage that the pattern gives does not include making a pom-pom, so you would need a little bit of extra yarn for that if you wanted the pom to match the rest of your hat. This next one is a child's hat pattern. It goes all the way from zero months to four years old. So there's a wide range of sizes in there. This is an older petite knit pattern. I personally hadn't seen this one until I started looking for patterns for this video. So I feel like even though Petite Knit is a more popular designer, this is something a lot of people maybe haven't seen. Uh, so this is the Karen's Bonnet. I can't remember if I said that already. And it's a really cute hat with like a little tie underneath. I don't think it looks like the typical bonnet maybe I think of where it's got like the pointed little little top or maybe that's just me. I think it's a really cute pattern that would be very versatile for a gift for a child. The gauge that this pattern gives is 28 stitches for four inches. It doesn't give a row gauge and I think with this pattern that reasoning is because it's very adjustable. You can kind of just knit until you hit the uh, measurements called for in the pattern lengthwise. The pattern only uh, gives yardage for one size, so I'm assuming this is the amount of yarn you would use for the largest size, which is about 191 yards or 175 meters of yarn. It is a fingering weight pattern, so you could definitely do this with a single skein of fingering weight yarn that you have lying around and it's just a very delicate pattern. It has what's called a smocking stitch that is used for the entire body of the hat. Kind of looks florally to me, I don't know. I just thought it was really delicate and sweet for a newborn. And then it does have the ties that you can use to tie under the child's chin so that the hat doesn't fall off because we all know how children feel about hats. Most of them do not like them. The Grow Hat is another adult-sized hat pattern. This one is from Fiber Tales. I've been seeing a lot of her patterns lately. They're very unique. A lot of them use a lot of embroidery in them and just different puffed stitches and stuff like that. This hat is definitely one of those unique ones. It's knit out of DK weight yarn. It calls for a gauge of about 19 stitches by 33 rows to get your four inches square. And you're looking at using about 175 to 219 yards worth of yarn in meters. That is 160 to 200 meters worth of yarn. The pattern only includes one size, but again, it's made to fit an average adult sized head. And I think if you did think that the hat was going to be a little small or large for you, you could totally adjust the needle size that you use in your gauge just a little bit to make it fit perfectly. The head circumference that this pattern does say it's available for though is 21.25 to 23 inches or 54 to 58 centimeters. So yeah, definitely a average adult sized hat. I think you could make this work as a gift for pretty much everyone. And like I said, it's a really unique pattern. It has this beautiful plant motif growing up, basically, as the name implies, uh, growing up from the brim of the hat. And it does have a folded over brim, which I really do like in a hand knit hat. Just keeps the ears a little bit warmer and I think it gives a really polished, finished look. I have one final hat in this video. It's called the Barely Bonnet. It's a pattern by Pure Stitches and this one is free, which is amazing. I love a free pattern. But this one, oh my gosh, adorable. I already have at least one person in mind that I would love to knit this for. They have a baby coming up in October and I think it would be the perfect gift to keep them warm through the winter months. This is a fingering weight pattern. The gauge on this one is 26 stitches to get four inches. Again, this one doesn't give you a row gauge, but I think it's pretty easy to adjust based on just knitting 
to the measurements that are given in the pattern. The pattern comes in sizes from 3 to 18 months. Looking at my measurements I've written down here, that's about 11 inches in circumference to 19 and 3 quarter inches or 28 to 50 centimeters in circumference. Yarn wise you're looking at using about 109 to 175 yards or 100 to 160 meters. So again, for fingering weight, you could get this hat done out of one skein of yarn. This is just the most adorable garter little bear hat. It's got the tiny little ears. It's so cute. The construction on it is a little bit unique. So you start at the front of the hat and work backwards to the back. At least that's what I could figure out from reading the pattern myself. So a unique construction if you're looking for a little bit of a challenge. I think this would be fun. And then also the ears are knit in four flat pieces, seamed together, and then seamed onto the hat. So if you don't like seaming, I wouldn't cast this one on, but it's such a small amount of seaming that I think for the finished product, this one's totally worth it. Moving on, I do have one foot category, I guess you could say, pattern for this video. I try not to pull a lot of sock patterns for these videos, at least, because I think socks are one of the first things a person's mind goes to when thinking of a single skein project. But this pair of slippers was different, and it also looked like a really quick and fun gift knit, so I thought it was worth including. These are the Simple House Slippers, patterned by Simone Alexandra, and they are a DK weight slipper. Gauge is 19 stitches by 30 rows, and you're looking at using about 170 to 240 yards, or 155 to 219 meters. So you're hitting just about at the full skein of DK weight yarn point. I think you would have to be cautious of weighing your yarn before you cast on this pattern, just to ensure you had enough but I think with most hand-dyed skeins of yarn at least, you would have plenty to complete this pair of slippers. The pattern has three sizes from an eight and a half inch circumference to an 11 and a half inch circumference foot or 22 to 28 centimeters in circumference. So that is measuring the widest part of your foot. So kind of the ball of your foot getting that measurement and that will tell you about what size you need, and then obviously you'll have to knit based off of the recipient's foot length as well. If you haven't before, you could easily Google what each foot size will equate to in measurement. I think like, for example, my foot is about a six and a half, and I think that's 9.25 inches, but that's something that you can Google, and doing that has made it very easy for me to gift knit socks and slippers because I know exactly what length they need to be. I don't have to ask the recipient to measure their foot for me and then somewhat ruin the surprise because why else would you be measuring your foot? <laughs> Anyways, this pattern is free. There is a paid for version on Ravelry. I think it may be a slightly updated version, so it might be worth your time to purchase it and just use the updated version that has some tweaks made to it. But if you're not in the place to purchase the pattern at this point in time, there is a free version available as well on the designer's website. It's linked on the Ravelry page. And of course, that's always linked down below in the description. But yeah, like I said, I thought this pattern was really unique, not just the typical slipper that at least my great grandma would have knit where it's just a simple garter slipper. I love the use of garter for just the heel and then the stockinette for the foot of the sock and it just looks like a really cozy slip on slipper. This might be something that's fun to have just in your closet at home too. If you have some guests over and they have cold feet it would be a really easy thing to just pull out and let them borrow while they're visiting. In my opinion shawls while they're not my most reach for knit item are a great way to use up one skein of yarn, especially if it's something special because you're sure to be able to use the whole skein to its complete entirety and just be able to see it all laid out in one beautiful shawl. The first pattern that I've pulled that is a shawl is the Broken Wings Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. She has at least, I think, two different, maybe even three, 
patterns, shawl patterns, that you can knit up with one skein of yarn, but I thought this one was really pretty. It's a fingering weight pattern with a gauge of 20 stitches by 30 rows. It's a beautiful airy lace pattern. It comes in one size, and shockingly, you're able to knit the shawl to pretty large of a size for using only one skein. When you measure it horizontally, you're looking at about 71 inches or 178 centimeters, and then for the depth, you're looking at about 15 and a half inches or 39 centimeters. So that's pretty large for a shawl. It's obviously not the deepest shawl, but I think it would be a great summer piece just to kind of wrap around your shoulders if you're a little chilly. It is made up of the most beautiful airy lace and it's got some twisted rib in there as well and it's all finished off with a really cute pico edging. The pattern does note that it is worked sideways from tip to tip so that's kind of nice as well because if you're starting to run out of yarn you could easily like weigh your skein before you start, figure out kind of what your halfway point is, and then just keep weighing the skein every once in a while as you're knitting to ensure that you stop at a point where you're not going to run out of yarn. I think this pattern, from what I can see, is pretty easy to stop at whatever point you need to to use up the most yarn that you possibly can. This next shawl pattern is from another wonderful podcaster. Her name is Francesca and she hosts the Italian Knitting Podcast and she released this summer her very first pattern which is called an Italian Summer Scarf and it is a free pattern which is so generous. It's a beautiful beginner shawl pattern. I think that anyone would be able to knit this shawl up and it's so customizable which I love. This is a worsted weight pattern but I do think you would be able to knit this up easily as a DK weight shawl as well. Its gauge is 20 stitches by 32 rows. It calls for about 241 yards or 220 meters. The reason I did include this even though the yardage is a little bit above what a 100 gram skein of worsted or DK weight would be is because it's so customizable. You can easily, like I was saying with the previous pattern, weigh your skein of yarn before you start knitting and then continue to weigh it as you knit and once you've hit about the halfway point of your skein of yarn, you're able to take the pattern and just start decreasing in it. So the pattern is knit from tip to tip in the horizontal direction. So you're going to be increasing all the way into the middle and then decreasing all the way to the end. So you can adjust your knitting to exactly how much yarn you have. All in all, I think this is a wonderful pattern that Francesca has put out and I think it's so sweet of her to have made it a free pattern as well. So if you haven't knit a shawl before or if you're looking for a gift knit for a friend for Christmas or who knows what, a birthday coming up, I think this would be a great one. I have quite a mess going on with my yarn right now, so bear with me as I uh, try to untangle what I'm doing. But uh, this next pattern has a little bit of a story to it, so we'll talk about that while I'm fixing my mess. If you follow Carson of Carsley Handmade on Instagram, you would have seen a couple days ago now she posted a beautiful finished object which was a market bag. I've seen market bag patterns before and they never really called to me but something about the one that she posted was just really beautiful and it got me looking for more market bag patterns partially because the one that she knit was in a book and while I could get this book from the library Will I? Probably not. <laughs> um, so I just thought, yeah, it was really cute and, I don't know, a little bit more practical to me now than maybe it would have been a couple years ago. The other reason I thought of looking for a couple market bag patterns, I know my family in Canada, they no longer have plastic bags in any store. So I thought this would be a fun gift to knit up for some of my family for Christmas just for keeping in their purse handy in case they need a bag to carry something home from the store. So I have two different bag patterns that I've pulled. One is a little bit larger and more practical I think for shopping and the other I think would make a fun project bag or just a tiny little bag to keep in your purse just in case. So this first one is the Market Bag by Davina Choi and it is a DK weight pattern. There is no gauge given but I think looking at what the pattern is it's a pretty forgiving pattern. I don't think 
you being a centimeter off of gauge is going to make that much of a difference because it is a bag. I'm not sure if the gauge is included in the pattern once you purchase it, as I don't own this pattern personally right now, but I don't think gauge is too big of an issue with this one. It calls for about 230 to 250 yards or 210 to 229 meters of yarn. It comes in one size and there is apparently a video tutorial included in this pattern. So if it's something that intimidates you a little bit, there is obviously a lot of lace in this one. There is a video tutorial to help hold your hand as you're making it. And then as for construction, this bag is knit flat and then eventually joined in the round to knit. I think this one would be great for like 100 grams of cotton yarn or linen might stretch a little bit too much. Um, but cotton, while it does have some stretch, it is forgiving and quite easily washable as long as you don't stick it in the dryer. This next bag pattern is a really cute one from Pearl Soho. This is called the Dumpling Bag, and it's one of those bags that's made with two straps, one shorter than the other, so that you can cross them over each other, and then just keep one strap over your arm as you're traveling around and doing whatever it is that you're doing. <laughs> that's why I think it's great for a project bag because you could put a pair of socks or a hat or something that you're knitting on in it and have the yarn trailing out of the bag but then only have to worry about keeping it on one arm while you're walking and knitting. This one is another DK weight pattern. It has a gauge of 20 stitches by 27 rows and you're looking at about 165 yards or 151 meters of yarn. I did write down all of the measurements for this one. So circumference wise, you're looking at about a 20 inch or 50 centimeter bag. And then like I said, you have two different length straps so that they can cross over top of each other. The shorter strap is 12 inches or 30.5 centimeters. And the longer is 14 inches or 35.5 centimeters. I just think this is a really practical bag for a knitter, like I said, for walking and knitting or even if you're sitting on the couch and your ball of yarn keeps rolling away on you you could cross the two straps over top of each other and kind of prevent it from rolling away as much finally like I said I pulled a bralette pattern this pattern I saw it and I was so impressed the thought that went into designing this is quite impressive it's got a lot of shaping and bust starts and just not something you see a lot at least I haven't seen a lot with knit bralette patterns. This is the Aphrodite bralette and I'm gonna have to look at the name here and I hope I don't butcher it. From Sonata Pillicate is what I'm gonna go with. I hope I pronounced that correctly. If not, I'm so sorry and it is linked down below. This is a DK weight bralette with a gauge of 24 stitches by 34 rows. You're looking at using about 142 to 280 yards of yarn or 130 to 250 meters of yarn. Comes in sizes extra small through 2XL, a bust circumference of about 27.5 inches to 47.75 inches or 70 to 121 centimeters. There is no ease stated for this pattern, but from my knitting knowledge, I do know that a pattern like this, you would want to have some negative ease because if you have positive ease, it's not going to hold your bust in at all. So I would definitely pick something size-wise that is at least a couple inches smaller than your bust circumference. Uh, just so that you know it's going to fit you properly. It does have bust starts on it, and then there's this really neat twisted rib detail that kind of runs under your bust and all the way around flowing to the back of the bralette. It has thin straps, but I think that's something that could easily be adjusted as well if you feel like a thin strap isn't going to be sturdy enough for you. And then otherwise, yeah, it's just a really cute pattern. I think you could put this under like a button up shirt or wear it around on a lazy day at home. I think it would be a really fun way to use up another skein of special yarn. So I've been talking for a while. My voice is starting to give out as per usual. I don't know what it is about filming these videos. I can talk forever with friends, but I think it's because I'm talking for, in this case, 
37 minutes straight with no one else to interject <laughs> that my voice kind of starts to go on me and get a little dry. My throat's dry. I have been drinking water. Don't worry about me. Anyways, um, yeah, that is the collection of 10 patterns I've pulled for this video. I think there's some really fun ones in there and some that I would definitely like to cast on myself at some point. If you have any fun one skein patterns that you've knit in the past little while that you would love to tell me about or anyone else watching this video, please leave them down below in the comments. I love when you do that and we kind of make like a little encyclopedia of patterns down below in the comments of my videos. If you liked what you saw today and you haven't subscribed already, I would love if you did so. and Hit that like button as well. It just helps get my video out to other people in YouTube land and it helps uh, grow the channel a lot which I really really appreciate. If you aren't a regular podcast watcher on my channel definitely come back next week for a regular podcast episode. I just sit down and talk about what I have been knitting on and the progress I've made on different projects. I'd love to see you there and otherwise yeah I will see you again next week. Bye! <music>